Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and as you know I'm reviewing all of ABBA's albums in order and today I reached their fifth studio album called ABBA the Album. This came out in 1977. It followed on from Arrival which I've already reviewed in a previous video. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with my grading system, I mark each track out of 10, ranging from terrible all the way up to out of this world. I then work out an average mark per track for the album. This enables me to compare all the different ABBA songs, all the different ABBA albums, and it also enables me to compare this album with other albums from other artists. So I'm trying to be consistent all the way across. Now, the first thing to say about the album is the cover. Now, it's not very good, is it? It's certainly ABBA's weakest album cover uh, so far. Um, rather strange things going on there. It looks a bit um, like a, a sort of dinosaur park or something. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, and it's a bit of a shame uh, because it doesn't really reflect uh, the quality of what's on the album. And when you flick through the album book with it, there's lots of better pictures inside. In fact, some really good shots um, of uh, sort of backstage uh, in rehearsal rooms, in dressing rooms, moody shots of the group together, which I think would have worked much better uh, than this scene we've got on the front. So the opening track is Eagle, in which Agnita and Frida share the lead vocals. This is a kind of slow, atmospheric uh, ballad. The, uh, the verse here is fairly bland. Um, it's about this idea of the dream of flying high like an eagle that flies on the breeze. And it has the air of a kind of a John Denver song in a way, uh, the idea of being in the mountains, feeling the breeze, feeling the power of nature. Um, there's some pan pipes in there to give it a little bit of mountain atmosphere. Um, and there's rather a cheesy sort of psychedelic video that goes with this, which uh, is looking rather dated now. Um, overall, this is OK as an opener. I don't find it a very memorable song. The voices do sound good together, um, but the whole thing is rather a forgettable experience. I'm going to say it's an average track for ABBA and award this one four marks out of ten. Track two was the UK number one, Take a Chance on Me. It begins with just four unaccompanied voices sounding really good together um, on this first chorus. Agnita and Frida sharing the voices on this as well. And those tracks seem to work really well, don't they? They work so well uh, together. This is about the females pleading to the men to take a chance on me. So it's another one of those songs which puts the men in the driving seat in the relationship and kind of the females are sort of relying on the men to take the decisions. Uh, so again, perhaps slightly sort of outdated view there. Uh, it would be nice to see something the other way round. Um, now the song really comes alive um, with its great vocals. Agnita coming in with that line, you know I got. You know, it's a really powerful voice there, soaring above the others. Um, and um, this is what makes it such a, uh, it's a professional and uh, a coherent recording this and as well as being a great song and powerfully delivered. Um, it's a neat pop song. It's beautifully produced and we can see how popular it is by its having 122 million listens on YouTube alone. Um, so it's a, it's a polished piece. It's a landmark uh, recording this. I'm go going to give it an excellent 8 out of 10 on my marking system. Track number three is One Man, One Woman. Now, Agnita takes the lead on this story of a relationship going wrong. There's no talking at breakfast. Communication has stopped. Is there enough there to see this relationship through? That's the question she poses. Um, and the verse in particular um, is melodic and moving. The refrain is not quite so catchy and perhaps just lets the, sun, the song down a, a little bit. Um, but the whole thing is done in a delicate, tuneful voice. We get three verses, so there's plenty of story to be told here. And I would say this is a pretty decent album song. So I'm going to rate it as a good track and give it six out of ten. While track number four is the very familiar and accomplished The Name of the Game, another UK number one. It opens with mysterious minor chords and then the delicate female voices come in. It's again another relationship at the crossroads. Uh, the females are not understanding, is this man serious? 
does he feel anything? Uh, and Frida gloriously questions, tell me, please, because I have to know. Again, another powerful moment in this song. Um, again, it's giving the power in the relationship to the man. You know, it's the female sort of pleading and questioning. The man has to make the decision. The females are at the mercy of the decision by the guys here. Um, so, again, we're getting that viewpoint in there. Um, I find this a more openly emotional and deeper song. Uh, than Take a Chance. Um, take a Chance, maybe we've just heard that too much and um, sort of that backing of Take a Chance, Take a Chance um, is, is perhaps a little bit hackneyed now, I don't know. Um, this, I would say, is the superior song. Um, I'm also going to give this an excellent mark, though. Um, a really good recording and 8 out of 10. Excellent. So that's the end of side one. Just four tracks on there. Um, we've got a four, eight, a six and an eight. Uh, so it's giving us 26 marks uh, in all, which is not bad for four tracks, is it? Let's see what's in store on side two. So side two opens with Move On, the fifth track on the album. Uh, now, if you ignore the first minute of this track, it's actually pretty good. Uh, we've got some rather corny male talking going on at the start about uh, voyaging through life and making an effort and trying. Um, once that's out of the way, um, and Agnita and Frida come in on this, um, it's actually a very catchy refrain, a gloriously tight refrain. It's tuneful, it's optimistic, there's classy backing vocals, and there's some decent metaphors in there about life, sunrise, the ocean and the wind, perhaps echoing that theme uh, on the eagle opening track. Um, the voices um, blend well together, the verses are pleasant and positive, um, and the whole thing is a bit of a breath of, breath of fresh air, which makes you feel better. So it's an overall a good package, this. Very good, in fact. And I'd give it 7 out of 10. Track number 6 is a heavy rocker, Hole in Your Soul. We get strong guitars and electronic keyboards at the start, and we're really in rocking mode. The whole thing seems to be built around this little riff. It's got to be rock and roll to fill the hole in your soul. Quite catchy, actually, uh, and the whole song sort of builds uh, around that. The verse is a little bit repetitive. Um, the whole thing, I find, is fun, but rather forgettable. Um, there's a bit of a strange break in the middle there um, where there's some sort of violent breaks in it. Um, but the whole thing's a little bit of a mishmash, and there are some kind of uh, crazy horses style screaming in it. Remember crazy horses? for that um, classic out-of-character Osmonds track, of course, which is still great to listen to. I would imagine this one goes down really well live, or went down really well live. Who knows? It may be in the new show. We don't know. Uh, not the strongest track on the album, though, this one. I'm going to call it an average track and give it four marks out of ten. Now we come to three songs which are linked together um, as a mini-musical, The Girl with the Golden Hair. And this certainly showed the skills of Benny and Bjorn in producing something, writing something that would exist as a stage show. And we've got early indications here of real genius. Um, now we have the old tinny piano starting uh, and then Agneta coming in with this wonderful melancholic voice. Um, we've got a glorious refrain. We've got fruity chords. It's an irresistible sing along. Uh, there's fine use of major and minor chords there, which um, really makes this um, pleasant to listen to and interesting. And I would say this is almost the perfect pop song. One of Agnita's finest vocals, without a doubt. It celebrates the wonder of music uh, and it's got that nostalgic tinge to it as well. Um, the sadness works, as we've seen in so many um, ABBA songs. And I am the girl with golden hair, which... Out of context, that's a bit of an odd uh, line, isn't it? But in context, we know this is a key part of this little uh, musical. Um, so what can you say? You can listen to this song over and over again. It doesn't get boring. It's a brilliant track. For me, 9 out of 10. Now, the next part of the musical is the track I Wonder, brackets, Departure. Um, and one of the joys of revisiting these albums, actually, is discovering these songs uh, again. Uh, because although I've heard this album when it came out in the 70s, I couldn't remember this song at all. And it's absolutely a beautiful song. Frida taking the verse here, um, a very musical opening line. You can imagine the spotlight on the actor at this part of the musical on stage. It's about a girl leaving home for the big city, the promise of things to come. 
Um, and uh, you know, Frida almost sounds like Elaine Page on this, doesn't she? You can imagine Elaine Page singing this as well. Um, and it's about taking chances and going for it. This is a very strong ballad, confidently and clearly sung. It's a lovely song to listen to and would work really well on stage. It's a pity in a way that they didn't write even more musicals um, because I'm sure they would have been very successful. Um, it doesn't really fit with the rest of the album in a sense, uh, but it exists on its own. Um, and I would urge you to go back to this one if you haven't and give it another listen. It's a very good track. I'm going to give it seven out of ten. Uh, track nine and the last on the album is I'm a Marionette. This is the third part of the musical. We've got an atmospheric opening um, indicating a sense of danger. Agnita and Frida sing together on this one. Um, they're kind of saying, I don't belong in this place. I'm being pushed around. It's all gone wrong in a way. Um, we've got a minor key, a rather shocking uh, refrain. And the whole thing has a bit of a kind of 60s, 70s uh, movie theme feel almost. Uh, I enjoy this track. I know some people criticise it, but I do like it. There's plenty of drama in it. Um, the long instrumental is maybe a little bit overdone, uh, but when we do get to the vocals, uh, they are strong, uh, they are memorable. So, fairly accomplished track, this one. I'm going to rate it as good and give it 6 out of 10. So, the second side there managed 33 marks. Uh, and the total marks there was 59 for the nine tracks, giving us an average of 6.55 marks per track. Now, there is one more uh, bonus track on the disc. It's another version of Thank You For The Music, brackets Doris Day mix. I am a big fan of Doris Day, actually. Um, this was an earlier version of the song. It's got a kind of honky-tonk feel to it. Uh, and the, the voice um, is a little bit like Doris Day's voice. I suppose that's why um, it's got that. Um, but I must admit, I do prefer um, the album version of this song. So the Doris Day mix um, is a fairly good 5 out of 10. But that won't contribute to my average mark for the whole album. So let's have a look at my ABBA chart so far. This is five albums reviewed. And look at all those new entries there. Going in, we've got Thank You For The Music, Take A Chance and The Name Of The Game. Uh, and then further down, a couple of sevens, Move On and I Wonder. So uh, this album contributing five tracks to kind of that top 20 of mine so far. Then down at the bottom of the league, well, nothing there from this album. This shows how consistent ABBA the album is, actually. Uh, there's nothing um, rated lower than a four there. So nothing coming in um, at the bottom there. We've still got I Am Just a Girl, only merited one mark, Pick a Bale of Cotton, Crazy World. Rather forgettable uh, deep cut album tracks. So look at my rating so far based on average marks per track. ABBA the album comes in at number two. I've still got Arrival as my favourite ABBA album so far with ABBA third, Waterloo fourth and Ring Ring in fifth place. Uh, and this graph, which I'm updating here, is the ratings for each song going in order from 1973 on the left through to 1977. Uh, we can see some big peaks here on the uh, Arrival album and some pretty big peaks here uh, on ABBA the album. So um, a really fruitful time for the album, really from 1976 onwards. So there we go, friends. These are, of course, just my personal views. All I'm trying to do is get a debate going about these great songs. Which ones do you prefer? Which is your favourite track uh, from this album? So I'd appreciate your comments. I do read them all. I try to respond if I can. Subscribe if you want to follow more of my videos and see you next time.